This is how you can create momentum for your Google Ads dropshipping campaign. In today's video, we are going to dive into the world of asset groups. My name is Hank, a Google Ecom specialist, and in the past few years, I have scaled dozens of stores to over six figures a month. And currently with our agency, we are managing over 1 million ad spend a month. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the insights about asset groups. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of asset groups. In this video, I'm gonna show you when and why to create asset groups, what kind of asset groups I preferably create and how to create those asset groups actually. So we're also gonna dive into the Google Ads Manager. But first, when and why do we create asset groups? In the last video, I shared with you my Google campaign setup that is ideally for Google dropshipping. Um, and I also said that we are only starting off with one asset groups most of the times. So in 80% of the times, we are starting off with only one asset group. Asset groups are a way to give the campaign more data. But a few weeks ago, I was talking with some Google Ads strategists from the headquarters and they were also telling me that if you put in asset groups too early and you're not sure if this data is actually matching your ideal customer profile, it can really impact your optimization negatively. So creating asset groups is a kind of tricky. I always like to growth hack asset groups. I like to iterate and test to create new ones, to analyze those and to see if they are actually working. So asset groups are a way to give your campaign more data and asset groups are a little bit tricky, like I said. We're starting off with one asset group only and you preferably don't create any more asset groups up until a budget of 100 euros a day. If you're in the range uh, between 100 and 200, 300 euros a day, you also don't prefer to go more than two or three asset groups. So I like to keep this rule of thumb with 200 euros budget a day, keep a maximum of three asset groups because the campaign is going to divide this spend a little bit on all these different kind of asset groups. And if your budget is quite low still, then um, it doesn't have enough data in it to make a significant conclusion when providing the budget and allocating the budget to different kind of asset groups. So create your asset groups along the way and also kill those asset groups along the way. You can create asset groups more early, but only create those where you exactly know that this is matching your ideal customer profile, that this is actually matching your, the keywords to your product. So if you want, you can create one more at the beginning, but preferably you start off without. And if you don't see any momentum coming, you can try to forge the campaign in the right direction with asset groups, but only do that after two weeks at least. Google optimization is really slow and the learning phase is most of the time five days. So give it at least like 10 to 15 days to optimize. And if you're still not getting any sales, then I feel like there's the moment to create more asset groups. Or of course, when we're increasing the budget, where we see certain product types are doing really well, or when we know actually some of our competitors, which we can use this traffic from, or when we have search teams that matches our navigation bar. But I will go dive deeper into that later. But like I said, we're starting off most of the times with only one asset group, the MTL products. This just gives the campaign the space to try and find your ideal customer and your ideal visitor. And that's also why it's really important to put in right titles and description because it uses this data in the empty all products feed to match with the right visitor. Asset groups are especially there to create more momentum when scaling and to scale more efficiently. Eventually, you can also divide the asset groups or based on different product types. You're not always gonna put in all the products. So what kind of asset groups are there to create? I already, some, some of them, but there are also, uh, there are most of the time three asset groups that I preferably like the most. Of course, this is a way, this is for me always uh, something that I need to test because there's not one solution fits all. So for your store, for your campaign, try and test and create new asset groups and kill them along the way, create new ones, but also try not to create too much. 
So there are three asset groups that I like the most. The first one is keywords. I will show you later, but you can actually insert keywords with a buying intention in the campaign in a single for the asset groups. This is actually really helpful because this, this means uh, I you're gonna put in the keywords and if this matches your product, it's like a win-win it's going to work and then we have search teams search teams are more general and this is a, most of the times also a way to create for more budget so if you're in a situation where your budget is not really spending everything you can definitely try this one first the search team is more general you're also going to put in all the products in here uh, and that's different with keywords because with keywords you only try to match this with a specific product type or specific products ex itself. And the, the third one I already also really liked, and this is actually quite a hack, you can put in competitor URLs and you're gonna extract the visitors or you're gonna say to Google, hey, give me similar visitors as my competitor has. And if you're having competitors that are doing really well, you can just put them in your asset group and um, this the most of the times also works really well for stores, for Google dropshipping stores. And there's also a Ford one um, that maybe is more branded because I always feel like this is not working in dropshipping and that's retargeting. If you're using Klaviyo, for example, you can just easily connect Klaviyo and use retargeting. There are also different kinds of asset groups with singles and interest. We can also test those, but these are more generic, uh, I think you, kind of know these those three that i just mentioned are a little bit more interesting to me especially for drop shipping since retargeting is not really profitable most of the time okay so let's dive into the ad account and i'm going to show you the three asset groups on keywords on competitor urls and search teams so we are going to create asset groups and like i showed last time um, we are only creating the empty all products asset group first we leave it empty. I explained why in the last video. Um, and on the other side, we're also gonna open Keyword Planner. This is actually a way uh, of Google to show you the data, to show you the keywords, and to show you actually the search volume. You have all these paid tools as well, like SEMrush and RS, where you can see more in depth about competitors, and they give you a little bit more insights. But I would, for also for the sake of this video, and also just for your benefit, I would advise you to just use keyword planning from Google itself. So creating a asset group, I always like to duplicate the old asset group. And what we do here, we're going to start off by using the keywords. And um, but before we can do this, we are actually going to look into the kind of products that we can push in this way. But before we can do this, uh, we need to take a look into what kind of product types do we have and where do we see the potential to create a specific asset group for? Where do we want to force some extra budget and uh, want to create more momentum? I always like to pick the ones that are having a slightly high ROAS and low spend um, because in this way we can just get the campaign um, pushing this product more. But on the other hand, we also need to have a, like a significant amount of products in there. So if there are only like 20 products in there, it's not going to make a big impact. So we preferably have a lot of variants in there. So as you can see here, the ones that are doing really well are also getting a lot of spend. Um, Yeah, so like floor lamp is doing really well, but I feel like there's not enough. There are not enough products in there. Um, clocks the same here. So if we see that there's not like one that's popping out where I'm like, oh shit, we need to create an asset group for this one. I like to take a look at the Google Trends. So in this way, we can be a little bit more specific on creating asset groups about products that are in the trend um, and for now i'm gonna look for table lights 
For the sake of this video, I'm gonna search for worldwide in the past five years. Maybe I need to. Table lights. Okay, as you can see here, the uptrend is mainly in September, October, and we are now in June. So this is not gonna make a significant impact right away. So I don't feel like creating specific one for that one for this one. Um, so as I as you can see here, we have clocks that are doing that is, that is doing really well, um, and is not getting a really high spend. So I think we are going for clocks. Um, does clock have a big significant trend? I ooh, sometimes it pops out. Yes, on October. But as you can see here, this is spiking really hard. So that most of the time means that it's about um, that this low trend is also pretty high so we're gonna look and we are operating on a dutch store so i'm gonna put in the dutch word for clocks and uh, the thing is that i just put some general keywords in there about about the product and it and google will show me all the relevant related keywords um so i see here it has a pretty high search volume and if we look at the cpcs Top of the page, seven cent. Uh, I mean, low range, seven cents. High range, eighty-five cents. And here it's even lower. So that means it's really good. So as you can see here, clocks has a lot of relative related keywords. I always like to put in the general keyword, and then it gives me all the other ones that are related to it. We're going to show up to fifty, um, and you can put in as many keywords as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do search clock. And then this is why it's really important to have your infrastructure, right? This is really important. To, uh, this is this is why it's really important to have your product types in here. Um, that's because you can find them here on this side. So we have two product types with clocks. I'll leave it all blank. And this is where the magic happens. We're going to create a asset group. So we have search teams. We're going to go into that later on, but we're going for additional singles right now. And then interest and detailed demographics. Um, we're going to make a new segment and we're going to do clock search intent. And then what you see here is people with any of these interest or purchase intentions. So that just shows us that this is the perfect way to put in keywords where there is a high search volume on. This means that Google is going to find people who have a purchase intention for this. Um, we, are, we can also export this whole file, but for now, I'm just going to copy paste it. So we have put in our keywords and um, I tried to do as much as possible, but we also want to keep it related and relevant. Um, so we've put a nice amount of keywords in there, in there, but if you think that the keywords that you put in are all relevant, you can do as many as you want. So this is one way of to create asset groups. And here you can save it. So the second way to create asset groups is search teams so search teams are a really helpful way to get more generic traffic in and i always like to put in search teams based on the navigation bar and this is also something i discussed with the google ads strategist um, putting search teams that are related to your navigation bar gives the google algorithm and the infrastructure it makes sense and it gives it more help in the right direction but it isn't really specific so for this store for the sake of this i can't show you what store what the name is of the store but i can't show i can show you this the navigation bar so we see we have four uh, things coming below in the navigation bar um, and we're gonna use those four as as, as search teams um, right now i only think those four are really relevant for us so so what do we do we call it 
we just call it exactly like we see on the navigation bar so just copy paste it So this is the second way to create asset groups and you especially use this one when you want to create more momentum and to create more budget. Uh, the other one was more specific to scale more efficiently and to get more sales in for a certain product that is in the trend for example or has a high search volume um, or is selling really well. And the third one also really interesting is the competitor one and the competitor one um, is where you can search for specific competitors in your niche and make sure that you are copy the link of them um, for the sake of this video i'm gonna make it easy we're gonna do ikea since we're doing a home store um, ikea is one and you can create this in the same way as the search keywords. We're gonna put in here, interest and detailed demographics. We're creating a new segment and we call it competitors. There, try to find users who are browsing similar websites like this. Ta-da. And most of the times you see some weekly impressions in a range of this. And this is also a really powerful way to create asset groups. You can also use certain types of apps, but since we are in e-commerce, since we are in dropshipping, I only like to use the competitor URLs. And there are also different ways where you can say, okay, I, wanna, I want people who are interested in home uh, furnishing, home decor. This is also a way to play more with asset groups, but this is more a generic way. I think you can understand that this is like more generic way you can try this as well but i the three s groups i create are the ones that are really helpful and are you am i using for my clients so these were three ways to create asset groups for your google ads campaign i've told you when and why to create asset groups what kind of asset groups you should create and how you could create them asset groups are really a way to create more momentum or to be more efficient with your budget. Later on, I will go more into depth in uh, dividing different campaigns with different asset groups, with different product types, but this is more an advanced scaling strategy when you are on a higher budget. So for now, this is the thing you need to know if you're just starting out with Google dropshipping up until a budget of 500 to 1000 euros a day, you will can definitely make it to reach 100k a month with this strategy. If you want to go to the next level, it will be more a way of creating new campaigns, also divide them with different kind of product types, with different kind of keywords, uh, but I will go more in an advanced strategy later in another video. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this interesting and I hope to have helped you with being more profitable and to scale your Google Ads dropshipping store to the moon. Um, please leave a like uh, and subscribe would be really helpful for my channel. Thank you guys for watching. I wish you guys a lot of luck on your journey and have a really nice day. See ya. Ciao.